Pay Completed Repair Order. When paying a finished repair order, you record the amount paid and payment type, then print the final invoice. However, if you've skipped steps in the Rider Repair Order workflow and you have all the notices turned on under the Repair Order and Parts Invoice Setup, there are several notices and warnings that may appear along the way. Let's pay a simple RO first and then take a look at some of these warnings. We'll select a finished repair order already in complete status, just double click on that repair order, and we'll select Close, Pay, and Print. This is a cash drawer screen, and here we can change our invoice date or date paid, if by chance we took this payment in yesterday, for example, the time as well. This feature here, Show Open AP Transactions that can be applied as payment, is a very cool feature. Let's say Steve Bennington was also a vendor. We could check this box and tag any invoices that we owe him and trade out this bill. He's not a vendor, so let's just pay his bill with Visa and cash. So he's going to pay $100 with Visa. Change the amount to Post, and click the Apply Payment button down here, and the balance left to pay is already listed. He pays the rest with cash, click Apply Payment, but wait, he doesn't have enough cash, he just wants to write a check. We can click the View Cancel Payments button, highlight the cash, and click Delete. Close, and now we can select Check. Apply Payment, and the system will ask for the check number. Click OK, and Finish. And we are prompted to ask for a new appointment based on the miles driven at this point, and here are the services that will be due. If we click Yes, the system will take us to the appointment screen, but we'll cancel. And then we're prompted to assign marketing letters, and choose from the list. Now we could have viewed sent letters to see what they've received lately, if any, and we'll close. Now let's pay an invoice for a customer that is also a vendor and check out that feature. Close, pay in print, check the AP transactions that can be applied as payment box, and here the credit available notice will appear. Click use credits for payment, and this is an invoice we owe them. See, they shipped us a VW engine on the 17th. So we're actually trading bills, the shipping bill for this alignment bill. Click in the Use column, and the amount used will be adjusted here. And click OK, and Finish. Shops love that feature, and the transaction details are available in both the customer and the vendor records. Now let's take a look at the various warnings we can select to turn on in the system. First is the Update Repair Order Information window, asking for a starting mileage, a default technician to be assigned to the RO, and the customer source. Since this RO was not in completed status, this button says OK Save instead of Close. We'll select Pay and Print, and here is our next warning. You have a placeholder on the RO. Would you like to override to allow us to pay the invoice or go back and replace the placeholder with an actual part number. Since we track our inventory, we want to make sure the part used is put on the RO and is taken out of inventory. Plus, we want to make sure the selling price is correct, which in this case, the alignment shim kit is only being sold for 10 bucks. That seems a little low. Let's click Go Back and put the actual part number in. Right-click and replace this placeholder with a part from inventory. And that price looks better. Let's select Pay and Print again, and now we have another warning. And here we're prompted to enter an ending mileage. And if we have entered a technician at the beginning, this warning would not come up. You have labors on this repair order that do not have technicians assigned to them. If you don't pay your guys flat rate, you might not care, but I think it's still a good idea to know who did what job, not only for your productivity reports, but in case this job comes back. We could go back to each labor and assign a tech, but we'll just say no. Now the repair order amount is greater than the revised estimate. Would you like to make a revision now? This prompts us to enter authorization details whenever we increase the amount of the repair order. The system captures the amount revised, date and time. We just select the method of contact, who we spoke to, and enter our initials. And we could enter a note here, and these revision details print on the invoice. And here is this warning the Repair Order Buyout and Low Stock Notice. It's a great opportunity to order your parts you have listed on this repair order that you do not have in stock. 
I personally think this is one of the most valuable features in Max Tracks. As far as being a time saver, it reduces your data entry, keeps your inventory correct, and a must have if you're using the accounting in the system. We would just click in the order column, click next to pick our vendor, Worldpack is our primary vendor for this oil filter, and then next again. And then we would click the send order button and the part is ordered automatically for us online. And this form is already filled out for us when the parts arrive. Just enter the vendor invoice number in post. Your inventory and your accounting are done. I just cannot say enough about this feature. And finally, we're on the payment screen. Here we can see with this flashing warning, there's a credit available on this customer's account. We can click the Use Credits for Payment button, and here is a credit available. Looks like Brent referred a customer, and we issued him a $50 credit for that referral. Click in the Use column, and then click OK, and then we have a balance remaining left to pay. Let's review some of our method of payment options. Cash, check, all these credit cards, AR charge to put this bill on account, and we already applied a credit used, debit cards, but this one is a bit different. Let me explain. We can select third-party billing to put this invoice down as a charge on another customer's record. Useful if you have an insurance claim or have a fleet billing company like GE Capital. So the way it works is the repair orders are tracked under the customer account, but are paid by another billing entity. Click Apply Payment and the customer search window will open to select the customer you want to charge the bill to. Type in their name and click OK and then press enter to select their name and that amount will now be billed to that customer's account and their name is printed on the invoice under the third party billing section. We always have a chance here at the end to cancel if need be but let's click finish. Remember all those warnings can be turned on and off but they're there for a reason especially if you're using the integrated accounting in the system and following the workflow as designed, all of that information is gathered along the way as part of your regular repair order writing process, so the warnings will only come up if something was missing. And this concludes the lesson on Pay Completed Repair Order.